Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you my updated 2021 version workflow of editing Milky Way images shot untracked without any astro tracker whatsoever. This process lets me take images, raw images that look like this and turn them into a final photo that looks like this. We are going to be using four different programs in order to achieve that, so it's gonna be fun. Buckle up, let's get started. So at first let me address one thing, because if you are sort of a, an advanced astrophotographer, you have an astro tracker like a Skywatcher Star Adventure or something similar, you know how to use it, you know how to take advantage of it, you might think to yourself, why do I even need to watch this video, because shooting untracked doesn't make any sense, does it? Well I think it does, and mainly because of two reasons. The first reason is going to be just the time it takes to set up the star tracker. Sometimes you just don't have the time to do that. If you are traveling, if you are with a group of friends, or family, people are waiting for you, you don't always have time to take it out of the bag, put everything together, polar line, make sure everything is correct, take the photo, take the second photo, etc, etc. And I mean the sky photo, the ground photo in, in the most simplistic scenario. And also in some situations you might not even have uh, the sight of Polaris, for instance if you're on the northern hemisphere you're shooting the Milky Way down south and uh, behind your bag there are some buildings, trees or whatever obstructing the view of Polaris, it just may not be possible to correctly polar align. And the second reason is that if you are um if you are taking a photo with some interesting foreground and for instance you have something obstructing, uh, protruding a lot into the sky, for instance some awesome tree or something like this, if you shoot this tract then it's going to smear out this let's say tree in the, in the sky exposure and this, this tree is going to take more space in the frame that it, that it should and it's going to be a nightmare in order to blend it in together in Photoshop. So shooting untracked I think definitely makes sense. And in order to do that it definitely helps to have a fast lens. For instance, my favorite currently lens for Milky Way photography is the one that I am actually shooting this video on. I also use it for astrophotography, which is the Sigma 24mm f1.4 and it has a very bright maximum aperture of f1.4 which means that I can gather a lot of light even in a relatively short exposure. So if you're out in the field the first step of course is to take your shots and I mean plural because if you want to end up with the best possible results you shouldn't take just one image, you should take a couple of those images and then stack them in software in order to reduce noise. So I would recommend to take like 10 to 20 images, I usually take around 10 to 16 images and bear in mind that the rule of 500 that you might be familiar with is not exactly accurate especially in these days with modern cameras. There is an excellent video from Nebula Photos, uh, Nico Carver from Nebula Photos uh, about the rule of 500 and some other rules that you might use. I will link it down below in the description if you're interested but the rule of thumb for me usually is I take the shutter speed that the rule of 500 tells me and I subtract a couple of seconds. For instance for the 24 millimeters, it tells me that I can expose for 20 seconds and I usually expose for like 15 seconds or something to minimize the star trails. So uh, let's hop into Lightroom which is the first out of the four uh, programs that we will be using today and let's see how the editing process starts. Alright so we are here in Lightroom and as you can see for this composition I shot uh, 11 photos and uh, in Lightroom I really only need to do very basic things like uh, I need to settle on my white balance because uh, after I export it from here as TIFF files I will lose the capabilities of freely changing the white balance so I need to dial that in and what I really need to do is just cool it down a little bit. Let me just type in the value I used uh, before which is 2632 and then I need to remove a little bit of green. I think I used 30 minus 31 and don't pay too much attention about the actual values here of temperature and tint because I am using an astro modified camera and that's why those values need to be a little bit different than using if you were using an unmodified camera so just cool it down or whatever to your liking and also if you are using some kind of a light pollution filter for instance the astronomic CLS that I have been using for quite a while or maybe the new Optolong L Pro. This is a new product for Canon EOS R system. I will be reviewing it very soon. Optolong was kind enough to send me this model for testing and review so stay tuned for that. 
and if you're using light pollution filters you would need to massage the white balance a little bit more in order to get the desired effect. I actually have a separate video about that, you can check that out right here. So in Lightroom this is pretty much all I have to do. One other thing that I would uh, stress to, uh, to check is that make sure you don't do any sharpening at this point and don't do any noise reduction at this point as well. Make sure you remove the chromatic aberrations and also enable profile corrections because without it, as you can see, we have a ton of vignetting, so make sure this is checked. And then just select all of these images, sync the develop settings and then just export them. And the best uh, settings to export for the next step is a 16-bit uh, TIFF. So just go to export right here and then I have a preset which is TIFF 16 bit no resize and make sure you have TIFF, uh, no compression, 16 bits per component and color space Adobe RGB and then just hit export to export them. So here are the TIFF files that I have exported and we are going to load them up into a second program which is Starry Landscape Stacker. I am using macOS so that's why I'm using this program. If you're on Windows, uh, I heard that uh, the program called Sequator would do a similar thing than the, that Starry Landscape Stacker on macOS. So I'm going to fire up Starry Landscape Stacker and I'm going to show you what I do there. By the way, if you are looking for a little bit of a simpler workflow than what I'm about to show you today, you can definitely finish off an entire image right in Lightroom and actually have a set of presets for Adobe Lightroom that would let you uh, make your Milky Way pop and make the final image look, look pretty cool right here in Lightroom. Uh, I will leave a link down below in the description if you want to check it out. I have a bunch of global adjustments and also brushes for local adjustments so definitely check it out, uh, check it out especially if you consider yourself a beginner. But let's hop into Star Landscape Stacker and let me show you the next steps of my personal workflow. Alright so here are the images that we have exported as TIFF so I'm just gonna select them all and open them in Star Landscape Stacker. And then initially the software automatically tries to detect the stars and place a red dot on those stars. As you can see it looks pretty good. I usually just leave it at the default and don't do anything in this step. And then what you need to do is go to Find Sky which tries to find the sky and mask it out. The blue overlay is supposed to be on the sky so you can actually paint that in in the areas where it didn't paint it automatically. It doesn't need to be super, uh, super accurate. Just, you know, spend as much time as you're willing to spend on this step. Again, it does not need to be perfect. So I'm just painting it in. You can use a smaller, you can zoom in in order to make it more precise. Something like that for the purpose of this tutorial should be fine. And also make sure that there is no, uh, like, un, uh, unchecked spot on on the edges and then if if the if you have the blue overlay on the ground you can also paint it away with this brush so make sure nothing on the edges is included in the sky mask here and then we are going to choose a line width which will let me align it with uh, with one of the initial exposures uh, out of the bunch so align width and then you can choose to which do you want it to align. So you can switch it from here. I think the 1896 is my favorite uh, sort of uh, ground right here with the water going into the into the beach like this. Um, so I'm going to align with that. Hit the align to current image. And then you just need to go align and composite. And this software is going to do everything for you. It's going to align, stack and reduce noise. And we'll see in a moment how the noise reduction really makes a difference uh, in this step. It only takes like a minute or so. Okay, and it is done. So let me zoom in right here. We are seeing the stacked version. So the composite image right here, let's switch to 1896. And as you can see, it is switched right here, uh, a lot more noisy than the stacked version. So again, the stacked one looks like this. So I'm good with that. I'm just going to um, to save that. You can actually uh, switch from different stacking algorithms. I usually use the mean, min, hor, noise. So just save it and uh, you will save it as a TIFF. So I'm gonna save it uh, right here. Let's save it. And then let's proceed to program number three, which is going to be, in my case, Pix Insight. But don't freak out. You don't need to know Pix Insight. You don't need to purchase Pix Insight if you don't have it. The step that I'm gonna, the only thing that I'm gonna do with Pix Insight, you can actually do without Pix Insight using a standalone program because we are going to be separating the stars from the from the rest of the image using the StarNet++ routine. And this is a free 
standalone program that you can download. I will put the link down below in the description, but you if you have PixInsight, you can do that from within PixInsight, which is what I prefer to do. All right, so I have this stacked image open in PixInsight right here. I'm just gonna go to process and mask generation and style it. This is going to pop up this window. And the, really the only thing that I need to do right here is to check this create style mask checkbox. This is going to make sure that we get a second image with stars only when this uh, algorithm is done removing the stars from this photo. So then just drag this triangle into this image. And then honestly, we just wait and this program is doing everything for us and it will separate the stars from the rest of the image, which is a very important step because then we will be able to make some quite aggressive adjustments in the image without the stars, without bloating the stars and anything like this. And the, the cool way about it is that I don't need to do any local adjustments to the Milky Way. I don't need to mask the Milky Way and increase the contrast in the Milky Way only without affecting the rest of the image. I don't need to do any kind of dodging and burning inside the Milky Way, which would impose that I'm actually making arbitrary decisions as to which part of the Milky Way should be brighter, which part should be darker. All of the adjustments we are going to be doing globally, which in my opinion kind of keeps the authenticity of the final image. So when the Stonet routine is done, and it takes about five minutes on my machine, we are going to be presented with two images. All right, and it is done. And as you can see, we have exactly two images. One image is the original image without any stars in the shot, as you can see. And the second one is only the extracted stars. So right now I need to save both of these images and then bring everything over to Photoshop for the final steps of the edit. And then let's actually go back to Lightroom because I want to select my uh, favorite shot of the foreground, which was this one, the 1896. And then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna actually remove some noise in this foreground because we are going to be blending the foreground from this shot only with the stacked uh, version of the sky. So I can actually create a virtual copy for instance. So create a virtual copy and then right here I am going to uh, go down here and let's apply for instance 25 noise reduction, some color noise reduction, okay. And then right click, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so we are in Photoshop with this single exposure and let's bring over the uh, the starless and the stars right here. So I'm gonna go to Finder and then just bring over the starless image. Hit OK and then bring over the stars. Hit OK. For now we can actually hide the stars. We can rasterize both of these layers because I'm not gonna need the capabilities of smart objects here and it is going to be running smoother without the smart objects. So rasterize those layers. And then what I need to do is I need to actually blend in the starless version into my single background because as you can see the foreground right here doesn't look that good. I like the foreground in this shot. So I'm gonna enable that and then I'm gonna go to select and select sky. And this is actually a pretty cool automated way to select the sky and Photoshop usually does a phenomenal job these days. So as you can see, the sky is selected. And then of course, all I need to do is just go to this button, which will create a mask. As you can see, we have perfectly blended in the sky from this shot. So what I actually need to do is I want to create a group. I want to move this mask to the group and then I want to move the starless uh, sky into the group. I can uh, make it uh, blue, let's say, so we can see distinctively what is inside this group. And then let's actually make our Milky Way pop in this image. So I'm going to select that, go to uh, curves adjustment. And then in curves, all I need to really do is take this hand tool uh, pick a, like kind of the brightest part of the Milky Way, which is somewhere right here, and then move it upwards in order to brighten that. Then pick a dark spot in the Milky Way and bring that down in order to introduce a lot of contrast. And as you can see, just by this adjustment, the Milky Way pops out in the image really, really nice. So I kind of like that. Uh, what I need to do secondly is to apply some saturation so I'm going to go to Hue Saturation Layer. I'm going to move it into my group. Everything that is inside this group is going to be uh, masked using this layer mask. So it's a nice way to kind of do adjustments with the sky without touching the, the foreground itself. So I'm going to just increase the saturation, maybe somewhere around 25. I think this looks really nice. 
and then maybe I can actually introduce some more contrast in the foreground. So the way I do it, I would select the background, uh, go to a rectangular marquee, uh, select my uh, select my background, sorry, select my foreground, and then I use a plugin called Lumencia in order to automatically calculate the optimal curve uh, in order to introduce contrast in this area of the image. You don't have to use Lumencia. This is a paid plugin. You can just dial in the curve manually. I'm just going to show you how it looks. It asks me if I want to feather the selection. I want to feather the selection. So it applies a layer mask to a curve adjustment. As you can see, the mask looks like this. It's feathered. And the curves itself look kind of like this. And this is without it. This is with it. And it kind of pops out the foreground a little bit from the image. What I want to do next is I want to add some clarity to this sky. So I'm just going to um, stamp visible everything. Command uh, Option Shift E on a Mac. This is going to create me a single layer with everything that I see right here. I'm going to put it inside the group and actually Maybe not. I can use some clarity in the foreground as well. So with this layer right here, I'm going to give it no color. And then I want to go to filter, uh, camera raw filter. And at this point, I am going to, um, I'm going to add a little bit of clarity. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity in order to pop this image a little bit, maybe 20, something like this. Uh, and then it's a good idea right here to go to uh, some noise reduction because we haven't actually done any manual noise reduction to the sky. So some maybe 20, something like this. And color noise reduction is also a good idea. Maybe 25. And then hit OK. And then we have our sky looking really, really nice at this point. Maybe I can do a second round of a curves adjustment, but maybe I can leave it like that. And then of course, let's bring in our stars. So if I enable that, uh, definitely it is not what we want. So I'm just gonna move that into my into my group. Uh, sorry, maybe not. Uh, let's just copy this mask. So I can option hold the option key and move this layer mask right here on the stars. And then I need to change the blending mode from normal to linear dodge add. This will uh, add the stars really nice again before and after. If you want to do some star reduction, it is very easy because I have these stars on this on a separate layer. So maybe actually let's uh, create a group. Let's move this layer mask to the group. Let's move the stars into the group. And right here, I can duplicate this layer by hitting Command J on a Mac. Uh, let's name it uh, stars reduced. And for star reduction, the easiest way, if you have them on a separate layer, is to go to filter, make sure the proper layer is selected, of course, uh, other, minimum, and then the value that I like to use is around, uh, I think, half a pixel, something like this. Make sure preserve roundness is selected, then just hit OK. And then if I disable this layer, as you can see, the stars are really nice and reduced and not bloated at all. And this is pretty much how this image looks. The final touch that I would add is a little bit of uh, sharpening again. So stamp visible and then filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And the settings that I like to use often are um, amount 80%, radius one and a half pixels and threshold of 10, just hit okay. And then maybe the very final step is to add some vignette. Again, I'm using Lumenza for that, you don't have to. And this adds a like final touch of a vignette to this image. And this is pretty much how the final image looks. So as you can see, using all of these techniques that I have just presented to you in this video, I didn't need to do any local adjustments in the Milky Way itself like I used to like a year ago, two years ago. So I really like this technique. I really like the result. I could work on the contrast in the Milky Way by adding a second curves adjustment if I needed to. But as you can see, using those in my opinion, simple steps, you can create a awesome looking image. If I was going a little bit too fast, don't hesitate. Hit me up down below in the comments. I would gladly ask, uh, answer any questions that you might have. Also, you can support me on Patreon and then I would be able to engage with you even more. So link to my Patreon is also going to be in the description of this video. Make sure to stay tuned for future videos. I have this Optolong L Pro video that I will be working on very soon. So this is coming to the channel. 
probably within like a month or something so stoked on that and of course i will be creating a lot more videos so if you are not subscribed yet it's a good idea to subscribe to my channel also give this video a like if you liked it i would really appreciate it and see you next time hopefully clear skies and bye bye